99 crazy music facts everyone should know. David Bowie's alter ego, Ziggy Stardust, was inspired by English rock and roll singer Vince Taylor, whom Bowie met after Taylor had a breakdown and believed himself to be a cross between a god and an alien. The Beatles' last public performance was an impromptu concert on the rooftop of Apple Records in London on January 30th, 1969. This surprise performance famously concluded with the police shutting it down. During the recording of his album Pet Sounds, Brian Wilson of the Beach Boys brought a horse into the studio to create the right ambiance for the album. The horse, named Boots, stood quietly in the corner while the band recorded. The replacements were banned from Saturday Night Live after a particularly chaotic performance where they played drunk, swore on air, and destroyed a dressing room. Stevie Nicks once turned down a marriage proposal from William Shatner because she didn't want to be known as Stevie Shatner Nicks. Sid Barrett, the original frontman of Pink Floyd, once showed up at a recording session unannounced with his hair and face completely shaved, including his eyebrows. His former bandmates did not initially recognize him. Barrett spent part of the session brushing his teeth, and when asked what he thought of the song Shine on You Crazy Diamond, a song about him, he replied, sounds a bit old. Gigi Allen, the controversial punk rock musician, introduced his famed poop punk stage movement in 1985 at a show in Peoria, Illinois. When he literally and deliberately shat himself on stage, there was a near riot as people tried to get away from the stench. Freddie Mercury, the lead singer of Queen, was a trained graphic designer and designed the band's famous crest logo, which incorporates the zodiac signs of all the band members. David Bowie claimed to have been visited by aliens, but what he didn't reveal was that they only wanted his advice on how to start a glam rock band on Mars. The band The Velvet Underground once played a concert where they handed out free LSD to the audience, resulting in a chaotic and hallucinatory experience for everyone involved. The punk band Dead Kennedys once had their lead singer, Jello Biafra, run for mayor of San Francisco in 1979 as a prank, promising to legalize squatting and ban cars in an attempt to raise awareness about political corruption and societal issues. The Sex Pistols once caused chaos on live television when they swore repeatedly and insulted the host during an interview. Steve Jones started calling the interviewer a dirty old b and a f rotter after he asked Susie Sue to meet him after the show, resulting in the show being abruptly cut off. The Stooges once performed a concert where the frontman Iggy Pop covered himself in peanut butter and rolled around on stage, leaving the audience both shocked, delighted, and somewhat hungry for more. Robert Leroy Johnson, an American blues musician, was one of the first musicians to join the 27 Club, although the final cause of his death is still unknown. It is alleged that he was poisoned by a jealous husband after being caught flirting with his wife. Guitarist Les Harvey died in the most rock and roll way possible. He was playing a show with Stone the Crows in Wales, and he grabbed a mic that had not been wired properly. He was electrocuted on stage in front of a cheering audience. In her will, Janis Joplin earmarked $2,500 to throw her awake with an open bar, so her friends make good on the request, booking the Lion's Share Rock Club and getting the Grateful Dead to play. Ron Pigpen McKernan from the Grateful Dead was good friends with Janis Joplin. Unlike many in the band, Pigpen was no fan of weed or acid, but the alcohol proved worse. He died from hemorrhaging of blood vessels around the liver, and it was two days before his body was found. Punk musician Mia Zapata was murdered in Seattle in 1990. 1993. It took a decade to match DNA from saliva found on her body with a Florida man who'd been in town around that time. He'd strangled her with the cord of her sweatshirt, which bore the logo of her band, The Gits. Manic Street Preachers guitarist Richie Edwards may well be a member of the 27 Club because he was 27 the last time anyone saw him. One day in 1995, he walked out of his hotel and no one has seen him since. Although his body has never been found, he was declared legally dead in 2008. Pete Ham of the Welsh band Badfinger hanged himself when he became depressed while embroiled in band-related issues, such as label and management problems, as well as a lack of funds. He blamed his manager Stan Polly, a crooked mafia-aligned lawyer who ran off with the band's money for much of his despair. His suicide note read, P.S. Stan Polly is a soulless b I will take him with me. The song lyrics to Pet Cemetery by the Ramones were written in Stephen King's basement while the band was visiting on tour. After receiving a copy of the book, D.D. Ramone retreated to King's basement and wrote them in under an hour. Foo Fighters frontman Dave Grohl is such a huge fan of UK rock band Killing Joke. He did all of the drumming on their self-titled 2003 album Free of Charge. 
In 1975, Elvis went to see a movie with his then-girlfriend. He was spotted by fans, and they went crazy. His girlfriend walked up to Elvis and said, Charlie, you're not telling these people that you're Elvis again, are you? The fans left. Ozzy Osbourne's wife, Sharon Osbourne, once took all his clothes from a hotel room to stop him from going out to drink. So Ozzy, being Ozzy, simply put on one of her dresses and went out in that. There is a music genre called murder ballads, which are songs solely dedicated to retelling a murder. Tom Jones's song, Delilah, is considered to fit into this category. Jack White's real name is John Gillis, and Meg White's real name is Meg White. When they married, Gillis took White's last name. Five years after they divorced, Meg was the maid of honor at Jack's second wedding. Then in 2009, Meg married Patti Smith's son in a ceremony that took place in Jack's backyard. Rick James had a brief relationship with Linda Blair, the star of The Exorcist. When she terminated a pregnancy without informing him, it deeply affected him, inspiring him to record the song Cold-Blooded about her. The Bob Dylan song, Hurricane, was written about a real boxer convicted of murder in a racially biased prosecution, and the popularity of the song and the funds Dylan raised from performing it at benefits eventually resulted in the conviction being vacated and the charges being dropped. Nick Cave's 1995 duet with Kylie Minogue, Where the Wild Roses Grow, about a man obsessed with a woman and eventually killing her, is actually a song about Nick Cave's obsession with Kylie Minogue. Ozzy Osbourne once admitted that, at the height of his alcohol and drug addictions, he shot all of his 17 cats. He went crazy and shot them all, and his wife found him under the piano in a white suit, a shotgun in one hand, and a knife in the other. A rumor that Rod Stewart had to have his stomach pumped after ingesting too much semen was spread by a disgruntled employee after being fired by Stewart. The rumor followed him for decades until he finally dispelled it in his 2012 autobiography. Patti Smith once said in an interview that she masturbated to the cover of her own album, Easter, to determine if it would provide satisfaction to teenage males, stating, I thought if I could do it as an experiment, then 15-year-old boys could do it, and that would make me very happy. Eric Clapton, during his marriage to Patti Boyd, physically beat her due to alcoholism and had two affairs before their divorce in 1989. Clapton even had children with both women while still married to Boyd. The hit song Blinded by the Light was written by and originally recorded by Bruce Springsteen, who made it by going through a rhyming dictionary and looking for rhymes and ended up being unsuccessful, but was covered by Manfred Mann and became a number one hit. Rod Stewart has a giant model train set spanning 1,500 square feet and based on post-war Manhattan that took him two decades to build. Elvis Presley once asked his limo driver, do you own this limo or do you work for the company? He responded, I work for the company. Elvis said, well, you own it now. The limo driver's tip was the limo. Musicians Nick Cave and PJ Harvey fell in love on screen during the music video filming of their duet, Henry Lee. While the love affair was disastrous for both, it resulted in them separately recording the albums considered to be their masterpieces, The Boatman's Call by Nick Cave and Is This Desire by PJ Harvey. Eddie Van Halen and Fred Durst once jammed at Durst's house, but Van Halen left when people started using drugs, leaving his guitars behind. When Durst ignored his attempts to retrieve them the next day, Van Halen allegedly bought a military assault vehicle, drove to Durst's house, and threatened him with a weapon. His gear was returned immediately. Tony Iommi once pranked bandmate Bill Ward by dousing him in alcohol and lighting a match. Usually the alcohol would just burn off, but one time the prank backfired, setting Ward on fire. He rolled on the floor, screaming, but Iommi thought he was joking and poured more alcohol on him before realizing. Ward suffered third-degree burns from the prank. James Brown, the godfather of soul, had a strict rule about not using his toilet. In 1988, he entered an insurance office with a shotgun, complaining about strangers using his bathroom. The police were called and Brown led them on a high-speed chase. He was eventually caught and sentenced to six years in jail. Joe Strummer of The Clash got the name for their album from a BBC show during the World War II, which Joe was a fan of. The catchphrase from the show was, Good morning, America. This is the London Calling. The mighty final chord of the Beatles' A Day in the Life was played by ten hands and three pianos simultaneously. The hands belonged to John, Paul, Ringo, George Martin, and Evan, the roadie. Mitch Mitchell, the Jimi Hendrix experienced drummer, took his first drum lessons with a guy named Jim Marshall. That guy went on to make the Marshall amp. 
At age 47, the Rolling Stones bassist Bill Wyman began a relationship with 13-year-old Mandy Smith with her mother's blessing. Six years later, they were married, but the marriage only lasted a year, not long after Bill's 30-year-old son Stephen married Mandy's mother, age 46. That made Stephen a stepfather to his former stepmother. If Bill and Mandy had remained married, Stephen would have been his father's father-in-law and his own grandpa. Wait, what? When Stairway to Heaven is played backwards, you can hear the phrase, oh, here's to my sweet Satan, the one whose little path would make me sad, whose power is Satan. He'll give you, give you 666. There was a little tool shed where he would make us suffer. Def Leppard's drummer, Rick Allen, lost an arm in a car crash in the mid-80s. However, Rick decided to keep on playing and learn to do it with his feet and some programmed drum lines. The band continued as normal, and their next album with their new one-armed drummer was Pyromania. In 1968, Jimi Hendrix bought a studio located in New York with the idea of transforming it into a nightclub. His sound technician convinced him in keeping it as a recording studio, and in August 1970, Electric Lady officially opened its doors. The recording rooms haven't changed since Jimmy jammed there, with the same furniture and paintings hanging on the wall. When The Clash recorded Sandinista there after Jimmy's death, they swear his spirit added an extra guitar line in the album. Slash's favorite song is Nobody's Fault by Aerosmith. He first heard it at the house of a girl he wanted to date. He said in an interview, I went to her house, talked for a while, smoked a joint, and then she put rocks on. It hit me like a ton of bricks, and I totally forgot about her. Leonard Skinner's Ronnie Van Zant is said to be buried with a Neil Young t-shirt, the same he wore for the Street Survivors album cover, which would be his last studio album with the band. Jimi Hendrix created the song Little Wing in only 145 seconds. That's only two minutes and a half, which is pretty much the same as the song's length. Malcolm Young used to play the solos in ACDC until one day he told his brother to do them because they kept busy the hand he used for drinking. According to Paul McCartney, the U in Got to Get You Into My Life was marijuana. He called it his ode to pot. Yesterday was first released in 1965. By 1967, there were already 466 cover versions of the song. As of today, there are more than 2,000 versions. The Sex Pistols were banned from concert halls in almost every part of the UK for their controversial acts, so they started touring under the name Spot instead, which stood for Sex Pistols on Tour. In Freddie Mercury's music video for The Great Pretender, one of the women singing with him is actually the band's drummer Roger Taylor disguised as one. Jimi Hendrix was kicked out of Little Richard's band for continuously upstaging him and for not wearing the uniform Richard had imposed on him. After one particular concert, Little Richard also reprimanded Jimmy for his guitar showmanship. At the end of the show, Richard came off screaming, Don't you ever play your guitar behind your head again. Don't upstage me. I'm Little Richard. Drummer Nick Mason is the only member to play on every Pink Floyd album. However, throughout his time with the band, he only ever sang one line. That line was on One of These Days, and it was the only line in the song. The line went, One of these days, I'm going to cut you into little pieces. Rick Nielsen from Cheap Trick had a custom guitar made by Hamer, which had a total of five necks. There was a regular Hamer neck, a fretless neck, a 12-string, one that sounded like a Stratocaster, and one that sounded like a Les Paul Jr. The memorable reverse echo effect on Led Zeppelin's Whole Lot of Love was actually due to track bleed through that sound engineer Eddie Kramer couldn't get rid of. So instead, he added a whole lot of reverb to mask the noise. Pete Townsend thought he was stealing his now famous windmill move from Keith Richards when he saw Keith doing it as the curtain was rising at a Stones show. He later asked Keith about it, but realized Keith was just stretching out his arm before starting to play. The b 52s song, Rock Lobster, inspired John Lennon to start making music again in 1980 because it reminded him of his wife Yoko's work. MTV execs came up with the idea of the Unplugged series after seeing Ian Anderson of Jethro Tull do a live acoustic set. But when Anderson later asked about having Jethro Tull appear on Unplugged, MTV turned him down on the grounds that the band was too old and didn't have enough appeal among the desired teen demographic. The music video for Michael Jackson's Bad was directed by Martin Scorsese. Waylon Jennings was Buddy Holly's bass player. One day when they were deciding how they were going to travel to their next concert in Minnesota, they tossed a coin to see who would take the bus and who get a seat on the plane. Jennings lost, took the bus instead of the plane. Buddy Holly told Jennings, I hope you freeze on the bus. To which Jennings replied, I hope your plane crashes. And guess what happened? 
John Deacon was always known as the quietest and shyest member of Queen, but as it turns out, Misfire, which was the first song he ever wrote for Queen, was about premature ejaculation. Talking of which, George Harrison lost his virginity in Hamburg, Germany, while sharing a room with the rest of the band. After he did the dirty, John, Paul, and Ringo all cheered from their bunk beds. David Bowie's diet during the mid-1970s consisted of only red peppers, milk, and cocaine. There is a town in Nevada that repels a semi-annual cricket invasion by blasting Led Zeppelin and the Rolling Stones. During the peak of his addiction, Duff McKagan from Guns N' Roses consumed as much as a gallon of vodka every day. Combining it with cocaine, he started to notice the toll it was taking on his body. His hair began falling out and he developed boils. Most seriously, the amount of alcohol he drank caused his pancreas to rupture. Keith Moon was the king of trashing hotel rooms and found particular joy in targeting hotel room toilets where he would drop cherry bombs down them to blow them up. He would even pay for the damage he caused, and it's estimated that he damaged half a million dollars worth of commodes. During Woodstock 94, it rained all weekend long and turned the grassy venue into mud. Green Day started a mud fight with the crowd during their set, which ended with fans charging the stage and bassist Mike Durnt getting a tooth knocked out. In 2005, a radio polled 3,500 music fans to make the ultimate rock supergroup, where they could choose the best musician of all time for each instrument. They ended up making Led Zeppelin. Izzy Stradlin of Guns N' Roses was once arrested for peeing in the aisle of an airplane. The restroom was occupied, so tired of waiting, he unzipped and urinated right in the aisle in full view of shocked passengers. He had to serve a year under probation and write an apology letter to the plane's crew. The word punk has its roots in Shakespeare. It was originally used as a slang term for sex worker, and only later did it take on a more masculine meaning in reference to a young male hustler, a gangster, a hoodlum, or a ruffian. Keith Moon was hyperactive and had a restless imagination as a child at school. Once his art teacher remarked in his report, retarded artistically, idiotic in other respects, while his music teacher remarked, has great ability, but must guard against a tendency to show off. Kurt Cobain hated the Grateful Dead because they were the opposite of punk rock and was once quoted saying, I wouldn't wear a tie-dyed t-shirt unless it was dyed with the urine of Phil Collins and the blood of Jerry Garcia. John Lennon once forced David Bowie to eat a thousand-day-old egg cooked in horse urine by shoving it into his mouth while the pair were on vacation in Hong Kong. They were originally out looking for the local delicacy of monkey brains. Michael Jackson was supposed to be in the World Trade Center during the devastating event of 9-11, but overslept and missed the meeting he was supposed to attend. Elvis Presley was a keen photographer. He used to encourage Priscilla to invite her school friends over for parties in their underwear that he just happened to document with his Polaroid camera. This wasn't a casual habit. He spent hundreds of dollars on Polaroid film for this very explicit purpose. Every hit single by The Who was written by Pete Townsend except for one, Summertime Blues, which was actually a cover originally written by Eddie Cochran. Bob Dylan never had a number one single. Out of Dylan's 58 singles, only two reached as high as number two on the Billboard charts. They were Like a Rolling Stone and Rainy Day Women number 12 and 35. There was only one song that he wrote that went to number one, and that was the Birds cover of Mr. Tambourine Man. The Kinks guitarist Dave Davies created the distortion effect on You Really Got Me by slicing the speaker cone of his Elpico amp with a razor blade in a moment of rage. Link Ray got his iconic guitar sound for Rumble by stabbing the speaker cone multiple times with a screwdriver. It would become the only instrumental single ever banned from radio stations in the US. This was because the term Rumble was a slang term for a gang fight, and authorities feared that the piece's harsh sound glorified juvenile delinquency. Another memorable instrumental is Space Guitar by Johnny Guitar Watson. When it was released in 1954, a Billboard reviewer was at a loss on how to describe it or assign it a numerical rating. So the single was left out of the magazine's charts. This was down to Watson's over-the-top guitar playing and the heavy use of audio effects, which was way ahead of its time and would go on to inspire guitarists such as Bo Diddley, Ike Turner, and Jimi Hendrix. Elvis loved to fondle and suck women's toes, and those in his entourage who were given the 
job of choosing companions for him, would often be asked to check the girl's feet. Small and delicate was the Presley ideal, and at least two girlfriends reported having been given the nickname Biddy by Elvis in honor of their itty bitty feet. Bob Dylan's first ever professional recorded performance was as a harmonica player for Harry Belafonte on the title track for his 1962 album, Midnight Special. Van Halen stipulated in their performance contracts that a bowl of M&Ms, with all of the brown M&Ms removed, was to be placed in their dressing room. They didn't do this to be jerks, but as a simple test to see if more important safety and quality specifications were attended to as well. The production of Def Leppard's album Hysteria was so expensive that guitarist Phil Collin estimated they needed to sell around 5 million copies to break even. They ended up selling over 20 million. 